Welcome to our video series on advanced features in Microsoft Word. In this video, we'll explore borders and shading in tables. You can apply borders and shading not just to text, but also to tables. That's when it's often used. So we can quickly insert a new table, and OK, that will do. The default options are fine. Then what we can do, go to Format Borders and Shading, and take a look at the options. So Borders, first of all, the Borders tab. Then Apply to, this is important, Paragraph, Cell, or Table. So let's say the entire table. And let's go with box first of all. Then style, let's go with dashed. Color, let's say light blue. And width of one point. OK that, and you see that it does exactly what it says. It just puts a border around the table. But now you can see that you can't actually see individual cells. And that can be a bit of a problem when making changes. What you can do is use this Show Hide Invisible Characters feature, and it shows you these. You see that each of these little images is one cell. However, there is another way. What you want to do is go to the Table menu and show grid lines. So now, even though the grid lines don't have any formatting, so when they're printed out they would be invisible, if you show grid lines, you can see them when you're editing the document. But if, for example, you go to File, Print Preview, and let's zoom in, you see that you can't see the grid lines because there's no formatting on them. By default, grid lines, the table dividers, are invisible. The default option within Word is to have a black border of about one pixel or one point, so they are visible. But once you start making changes with borders and formatting, they become invisible, so you really need to show grid lines so you can see where you're working. OK, let's go back to Format, Borders and Shading, and start making some changes. For example, you can choose Grid and OK that, Grid instead of box, you see. And now the grid is visible again because the grid lines have formatting, line formatting. OK, format borders and shading. And now let's say we wanted to change the border somewhat, the grid. And let's change the border to red. And you can see the preview of it here, and if we OK that, the change immediately takes effect. OK, back to Format, Borders, and Shading, and here it gets a little bit more involved. You can actually make changes to different areas of the table. You see, you can make changes to the outside edges and the inside line. For example, you can turn off all inside lines if you want by clicking here, and you see that this image, this image here, signifies a table. And these are the outside edges, which signify the outside edges of the table, and the central lines, which signify the grid, the internal grid of the table. So if we click here, we turn off the horizontal lines. So OK that, and there we go. The horizontal lines are now not visible when printed out. This will be clearer if I do Table, Hide Grid Lines, you see. Format Borders and Shading, and if I want to get rid of vertical lines as well, OK that, and you see they disappear. Format Borders and Shading, and if I want to get rid of the border at the bottom of the table, click here. OK 
OK that, and it's gone. Let's go back, Format Borders and Shading. Let's put that back. Let's actually put them all back. And now we can start making some more changes. So let's say now that we wanted red lines in the middle and a blue border. Let's choose blue. OK, we've chosen blue, and now let's apply it to the bottom edge. We need to click twice. Left edge, click twice. Once gets rid of it, you see, and once again, it changes it to whatever you've selected here. Top edge, click click. Right edge, click click. And now you see we have a dashed blue border to the table and red dashed lines for the grid lines. And there you go. That's slightly more advanced, so you may want to play around with that and see what you come up with. But you can see how you can have a lot of flexibility over the line coloring of your table, the grid line coloring and formatting of your table. OK, Format Borders and Shading. And you can even add diagonal lines. If we OK that, that's how that looks. You might want to use that or not. Let's undo that because it may make the text slightly difficult to read. Format Borders and Shading. And let's go to Shading and Similar Options again. Let's apply to the table, and note that you can apply at the cell level if you wish. Let's say Style, and let's choose... Let's say Light Upward Diagonal. And let's make it Light Blue. And actually, what we want to do is Let's choose light blue here as well. This color here is the color of the design. And if we want to fill the background, if we say no fill, let's see how this looks. OK, it's quite difficult to make out this design. So let's go back, Format Borders and Shading. And let's choose red, and OK that. And there we go. You can see how it looks. Let's go back again, Format Borders and Shading, and there's our table. So the fill is the background color, really. If you choose no fill, it's just a white background or whatever color your page is. Then the pattern just sits on top of the background, the fill, if you have one at all. For example, if I chose, and this actually, you can see that choosing such a design is effectively the same as choosing a fill anyway. For example, if I chose, let's go with the light trellis again, and for the color, let's choose light green. OK, difficult to make out. Maybe we need a harder color for the trellis design to really be clear. OK that, and there we go. So you see there are a lot of borders and shading options to play around with with tables, and you can apply them at the cell level or the table level, and you know that you can really make your tables a lot more interesting. But you want to play around with them because there really are some quite advanced and very customizable options to use, as you can see. But they can really make a difference to your document.